hearts and minds for worship. Our opening song is Immortal Invisible. Welcome, everybody. Today, the fifth Sunday of Lent, uh, we celebrate Holy Eucharist, right? Two. That will begin on page 319 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page two of your bulletin. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. 
Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil, evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. Uh, the first reading is from the book of Jeremiah. Then God spoke all these words. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will not be like the covenant that I made with your ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it within their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive them their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 13, found in the Book of Common Prayer, page 656, or page 4 of the bulletin. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. And done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. And upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner from my mother's womb. 
For behold, you look for truth deep within me. And will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear a joy and gladness. That the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The second reading is from Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God, a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. to God. Raising up 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servants be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come into this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I... When I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. From our Gospel this morning, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. In the name of the loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So here we are on this fourth Sunday, uh, fifth Sunday of Lent, as uh, the weeks, the Sundays of Lent draw to an end. <clears throat> Next week, we have Palm Sunday. And this week, we're back into the Gospel of John. <clears throat> And we hear Jesus sharing with his disciples yet again. And in John's gospel, this is that moment that people have been waiting for. This is that moment when all things change. Now, of course, things will change even more here shortly as we go through the gospel and we go through Holy Week together. But we hear of this story. We hear another prediction of Jesus predicting his death talking about the seed that must die, fall to the earth, to then will sprout so much more. He's predicting his death here. 
And it's in a weird spot that he does that. In fact, usually I kind of focus on this, this seed that is, has to die to grow. We're in the middle of, or we're at the very start of spring. Yesterday was the first Sunday of spring. I know the weather, well, right now the weather looks like it. We're going to get more snow this afternoon, so who knows? But in this gospel, it wasn't that seed metaphor that really captured my attention, that captured my heart and my mind this week. It was that one sentence from the Greek folks who came to see Jesus. As they come to Philip and they say, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. What an amazing statement. And it's such a simple statement, but so, so loaded. We want to see Jesus. In John's gospel, this is a, a loaded sentence, this is a loaded moment. Because these Greeks... They represent the world in John's gospel. The world now is coming to Jesus. Remember last week we heard that from John 3.16, I came to the, into the world to forgive all. Well, the world now is coming to Jesus. The world now in the, in the, in the people of the Greeks come and they want to see Jesus. It's really interesting how Jesus never really responds, does he? Until the very end, if you will. Because the Greeks, they come up and talk to Philip, who, which is a Greek name, so they probably had some type of connection. And Philip goes in and talks to Andrew, and then the two of them go to Jesus. And then Jesus goes into this whole long discourse about the sea dying and about dying to ourselves. The prediction. And then at the very end, Jesus says, And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Those arms of love stretched out onto the cross for all people. Jesus does respond to those Greeks who want to see Jesus. They will be able to see Jesus in so many new ways. No longer is this message only for a few people. It is for the world. And I find this sentence really, really interesting. This sentence, this little piece, Sir, we, we want to see Jesus, is in many, many churches. But unfortunately, these plaques that these are printed on are kind of the where, where's Waldo of churches and Bible, Bible verses. Because if you walk in, it's hard to find. Many of the older churches that have the uh, amazing pulpits, you've seen them, some of them are almost like a big chalice and, and you walk up the stairs to get into the pulpit and you preach out, out to the whole congregation. And right on that pulpit as a preacher would be getting up into it, there's usually a plaque. And it's this verse, it's, Sir, we want to see Jesus. That verse is to remind the preacher of what our job is. That we are to preach Jesus, not ourselves, not our agenda, but to preach the Word of God. What a great reminder for preachers. But unfortunately, I think we've hijacked that verse just for those who get to walk up into a pulpit. Because that verse is for all of us. I would love to see this verse on each side of the doorway in a church, both as you go in and as you go out. Sir or ma'am, we wish to see Jesus. Because it would be a great reminder for all of us as we come into church of what we are really looking for. Maybe that should be a slide as we start our services in, on Zoom and we end our services in Zoom. Ma'am, I want to see Jesus. Are we coming into these services? Are we coming into church to see the right thing? And even more importantly, as we go out, are we going out the doors of the church? Are we logging off of Zoom for the right reasons? To go out into the world 
and see Jesus, to see God's love, to see and to share God's mercy, to forgive and be forgiven, to love and to be loved. This moment in this gospel is when it becomes obvious that this message of Jesus is for everyone. It's for the world. So how are we going to go out? How are we going to go and seek Jesus out into the world? How are we seeking Jesus as we meet on Zoom? Is it Jesus we're really looking for? Or is it something else? What do you seek? What do you want to see? Both in this time of Lent and, on, and in every day of our life. Hopefully we too want to see Jesus. And all parts of Jesus. Not just the feel-good parts, because there's a lot coming up. Here in Palm Sunday and Holy Week, we will see what it really means to follow Christ. We will see what it means to share Christ into the world, the risen Christ, as well as the crucified Christ, the healing Christ, as well as the Christ who calls us to be healed. So today, as we walk and close out our adventure in Lent, as we come towards Palm Sunday and Holy Week, may we know that God's love is given to all, to us and to those outside. May we know that, and may we seek Jesus in new ways. May we be loved and love others as God loves us. And may we strive to see Jesus inside these walls, inside Zoom, and outside into the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now we continue our service with the Nicene Creed. Michael. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, a one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate with the Virgin Mary, was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is sit at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom shall have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 3, are found on page 6 of your bulletin or page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. We'll read responsibly. Father, Mother, Creator of all, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Bishop Kim, 
for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Today we lift up Sue and all those we know and love, but see no longer. We pray. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Today, Lord, we pray for all those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Soren M, Karen M and family, Miriam S, Damien and family, John and Ann, Chris H, Jeremy P, Mary P, Michael C, Jan P, Glenda, Will, Mary B, Dave Carey, Nick S, Guy M, Cynthia F, Diane, Arlene, Leslie, Rita Krupp, Michael L, Megan and the Coltiska family, Josh S, Jamie Palmer, Christy, Irene, Jen and family, Dave and Judy, Derek, Jane and family, Debbie and Dave and family, Nancy Z, Baby Violet, Freddie, postulate for Holy Orders, Chris Lewis Medina, our military families, law enfor enforcement and first responders, our homebound parishioners, and those in nursing facilities. Today, we pray for all who are affected by the coronavirus, those who have died, those who are sick, those in quarantine, and their families. We pray for rain, snow, and relief from the drought. Today, we especially pray for our country. We pray for justice, we pray for peace, we pray for understanding, and we pray for an end of the racism, hatred, and political division that continues to infect and divide this country. We celebrate with those who have birthdays this week. Kevin, Jack, Ali, Rob, Dominic, and Irma, as well as those celebrating anniversaries, Sarah Jane, and Scott Reed. Holy and gracious God, we do lift these and all the prayers of our hearts up to you, knowing that you are constantly doing more than we could ever ask or imagine. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace, everyone. I invite you to share God's peace with those in your household and after the service to reach out to those outside of your household and share God's peace with them as well. Just a few announcements of a life in the parish. Uh, today we do have communion, so those who have already uh, received the uh, pre-consecrated uh, communion kits, uh, we invite you to bring those out and uh, receive communion with us. For those who have not done that, you're welcome to uh, attend the drive-up communion. So after the service, up until 12.15, you can drive up and receive communion uh, from one of our lay Eucharistic visitors or myself and all, and uh, join us in communion as well. Today at four o'clock, uh, we'll have our youth group. 
Uh, we're hoping to be outside and uh, playing some games with masks and social distancing. Uh, that's all weather dependent. If it's snowing or raining at the time, uh, you can uh, catch us on Zoom. Also coming up, as I mentioned, next week is our Palm Sunday celebration. We'll have the blessed palms out on Saturday to come by and pick up like we did last year. Uh, next Sunday, we will be online only. Um, we also have a, a wonderful pageant that the kids did for uh, the triumphal, uh, re triumphal entry into Jerusalem. I've seen the first cuts of it, and it is going to be fabulous. So following that service, though, we are going to put out the labyrinth like we've done in past years here in the sanctuary. So the labyrinth will be on the floor, and you can sign up on a uh, sign, us, sign up genius link and sign up to come in for a half hour. It's going to be every hour you can sign up. We invite you to come in for a half hour or so, spend some time in prayer, and then go ahead and leave, and that'll uh, leave the building uh, empty for another half hour or so before the next people come in. Then through Holy Week, we'll have our Monday Thursday service. That'll be online like we did last year. Good Friday, we're hoping to have weather permitting three different times that we'll have groups of up to 30 people do the um, uh, Way of the Cross or the Stations of the Cross over at St. Philip in the Field out in Sedalia. So there's a sign up sheets for that or sign up on Sign Up Genius for that as well. In case of bad weather, we'll have one noontime uh, Stations of the Cross. And then that evening at seven o'clock, we'll have the, the liturgy um, online as well. So you can join us all kinds of ways on Good Friday. Holy Saturday, we're hoping and praying for good weather and uh, planning on an Easter egg hunt starting about four o'clock with some other activities for families. And then we will um, at five o'clock have a modified Easter vigil. And uh, with that, we have a baptism as well. So we're hoping to do all that outside and there are signups for that as well and then easter day the eight o'clock service will be on zoom just like we're norm we normally do and then at uh, 10 30 service we're hoping to have that service outside again weather permitting we are limited to uh, to numbers on that so please do sign up on the um, sign up genius if it's full please do put your name in the wait list and we'll be working with that as, as best we can to try to get as many people. If you're, not, well, or if you're not feeling to be outside yet and want to stay on Zoom, we'll still be on Zoom for that service as well. Um, so you can watch the service and join us for that as well. All of those, uh, the, the Easter vigil and the Easter service will have Eucharist as well with drive up after the services and then also with uh, opportunity to pick up communion for that. So join us for those during Holy Week. It'll be hopefully uh, uh, be different again, but maybe hopefully this will be our last one that we'll have to do in such ways. We do continue our Lenten study this Wednesday night at 630. This will be our last one. So join us online if you'd like. And then also um, after Easter, starting on April 15th, uh, Bob Newowner is going to be doing a study on John's gospel. He has his PhD and uh, his dissertation was about John's gospel. And this particular one is going to be Jesus and the feminine within um, the gospel of, of uh, John. So he is a great scholar. So it'll be a great opportunity to, to walk uh, through the gospel of John a little bit in a very different way. So if you have any other announcements, you can email them to myself or to Ash and we'll make sure that they get into those weekly emails. If you're not getting those weekly emails, please let us know. That is the way we're sharing our information in the best way possible. Most of that also, and the whole Easter and Holy Week's schedule is on the website also, so you can check it out there. All right. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
And we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Many the gifts. Amen. And now we continue with Eucharistic Prayer A. That can be found on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 7 of your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, Join in our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, 
we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Lord's Prayer is found on page nine of your bulletin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And at this time, I invite those who uh, have communion at home to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Post-communion prayer can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 365 and in the bulletin on page 9. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us bow our heads before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, yes. Great to have everybody with us. Welcome.